that was it. Man, there seems to be a great spirit in the service today. Boy, I hate to ruin that, but here we are. Right? Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. You know, I'll be honest with you. I believe every time we gather together in the house of God, I thank the Lord to be a tremendous spirit. Thank the Lord to be a tremendous spirit. I am there ought to be that, and boy, it's that way today, and it should be that way all the time, and singing sounds good, you sing like you mean it, and you know, you sing like you're not worried about somebody else hearing you, and, and forget about that, we're, this is not a performance, you're not trying to be, in, win the voice, or America's Got Talent, and I think now there's a show called The Four, alright, I haven't seen it, just heard of it, and uh, and but uh, you know I, I'd rather hear you sing than any of them. Any of them, I'd rather hear you sing. So glad you've been singing this morning. We're in Romans chapter 13. Uh, we've been there now for a couple of weeks, and we we'll be there a little bit longer too. All right, before we get done, I want you to look at verse 11 with me, if you would. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Uh, would you bow your head and close your eyes and we pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for what it says to us. Thank you, Lord, that we have it. And by this book, we can know the mind of God. And Lord, I pray you deal with every heart this morning. Meet with us, speak to us, and Lord, help us to respond to you today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Uh, time is the one commodity that cannot be recycled. Man, we recycle all kinds of stuff nowadays. We recycle paper. I remember years ago, I used to, uh, it was youth camp time and during the summer and Boy, we would go and collect up a uh, newspaper, and we'd take it down and recycle it, take that money, help kids pay their way to camp. Uh, my wife at the time was working for Linux Industries, and they had a bunch of cardboard they were getting rid of, and I can remember taking my brother's pickup truck down there and loading that cardboard. We dented his truck, loading that, yeah, probably the first dent in that pickup truck he had. We dented that truck loading that cardboard in it. He never forgave me. And, uh, but we took that cardboard and re took it down to the recycler and helped some kids go to camp. And I uh, man, you recycle paper, recycle aluminum, iron, steel, plastic. And nowadays the list goes on and on. But I'll tell you, you cannot recycle time. Every one of us is given 60 seconds in every minute. 60 minutes in every hour and 24 hours in every day. But once those seconds, minutes, and hours are used, they're gone. They are gone. Now, I know nobody sitting here is going, wow, such wisdom from the preacher. <laughs> I never knew that. But now I know about he knows there's 60 seconds in a minute. I know it didn't impact, you know, you didn't get impacted by that. You know it. You know that truth. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. We live as if there is a never-ending supply of those seconds and minutes and hours, and they're going to be continually resupplied for our pleasure and our use. That's the way we live. We live as if it doesn't matter. All right? But I want to tell you, that's why we're great procrastinators. We're great procrastinators. Yes, sir. Uh, here in Texas, we it's manana. You know? hey, I'll take care of that tomorrow. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that in, in a little bit. In a little bit. I still tell my wife that kind of thing. She says, the garbage needs to go out in a little bit. All right? In a little bit, we'll do it. All right? But you know, we, we always willing to put things off and plan on doing it tomorrow, next week, or somewhere else. But the Bible in Proverbs 27, verse 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. 
Amen. So what does that mean? That means for the Bible believer, now is the time. Amen. Now. Now is the time. All right? We don't have guarantee of tomorrow. We don't have guarantee uh, of anything else. We don't have guarantee. You know, I've got plans for this year, but we don't have guarantee of this year. Now, for the Bible believers, the time. That's exactly what Paul was doing here in Romans. He's emphasizing that fact to the folks at Rome. He said there in verse 11, he said, it's high time. He said, right now. He said, it's time to wake up. I, I preached to you on that. And he, he said, it's time to look up. He said, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Amen. We ought to look up. And, and we're to do that. But I want you to notice that phrase there in, in verse 12 where it says, let us therefore cast off Amen. the works of darkness. Yes. Cast off the work of darkness. Hey, I believe it's time for us to cast off some things. Cast off the works of darkness. You say, what do you mean? Well, as believers, it's time we quit fooling around in sin. Amen. It's just time we quit wasting our time fooling with sin. Amen. Works of darkness are those things that you have to hide. That you have to hide. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. You have your Bible. We're not in a hurry, right? Nobody wants to eat lunch before 1.30. So uh, Ephesians chapter 5, all right? Ephesians chapter 5. Look at you on verse 11, all right? The Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Hey, the Bible says we're to get rid of those things. We're not even having any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Those things that you have to slip around to do. Those things that you don't want the preacher to catch you doing. Hey, there's a lot of those kind of things. I, I, I've told you the experience. And I'm going to tell it again, all right? So you, you've heard this illustration. Good, you're going to hear it again. Uh, uh, you know, I've knocked on doors, knocked on doors, and you hear the scurry. You hear it's the preacher, <laughs> and then you hear the scurrying around in the house. They're cleaning everything up, trying to hide everything. You know, uh, one time, <clears throat> one time, my dad and I were going to make a visit. We were going to visit this young fellow, and uh, he lived in an apartment complex. And we're coming around this way. And there's one of those apartment complexes where they have. Ever apartment had a little patio type thing, you know, with a double glass door, and it had the wooden walls around it. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, so we were coming up the walk, and the fellow was coming this way. He was coming this way out of the apartment, and we were coming up here, and he was swinging along. He had a beer in his hand, and I, I've never seen a guy act so quick in my life. I mean, I really had. I mean, he never missed a beat. He's swinging his arm there. And he spots us, that arm swing, that beard bottle went over in that, uh, in that patio, just like that, man. And he never batted an eye, never missed the lick. Hi, preacher! <laughs> I thought he was a quick thinker, if nothing else, all right? Listen, you know, there's some things people like to hide. Some things you like to hide from the preacher. Some things you hide from your spouse. You young people. You try to hide things from your parents. Hey, listen, the Bible said we're to cast off those works of darkness. Those things that we have to hide. They're, you know, they're best done in the darkness. The Bible even said men love darkness because their deeds are evil. You say, what are you talking about? We'll look there in, in Romans, back to Romans chapter 13, and, and we'll look at them. It, it even mentions some things there. In, in Romans 13, in the next verse, it, it says we're to walk honestly, all right? Uh, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness and chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. We're talking about, hey, chambering and wantonness. That's just plain old immorality. Oh. That's what that is, all right? That's what it is. Fornication, those kind of things. That, that's exactly rioting, drunkenness. Oh. Now, maybe you sit here and say, preacher, I'm in the clear. Oh. The only problem is God just had to put those next last two things oh. in there. Strife and envy. 
when we get those two things put in there, we're not in the clear so good anymore. You know, they kind of have a tendency to hit home, you know. Now, we may not like everybody to know we're envious of somebody else. Amen. We may not want it known that there's strife amongst us. Hey, if we go to your house and knock on your neighbor's door and ask your neighbor about you, what are they going to say? Is there strife? How hey, about that fellow that parks next to you in the parking lot? You know the one that dings your door? Is there strife? Hey, I'm just saying, don't get mad at me. That's what the Bible said, all right? Amen. The Bible said there's some things we're to cast off. And I want to repeat this to you. We don't need and we don't have the time to waste in such things. You say, well, why is it such a big deal? Why is it such a big deal? I'm going to give you three reasons, all right? And we'll be done. Number one, for the sake of the truth. For the sake of the truth. Listen, I'm preaching to you this morning if you're saved. If you're a child of God. You and I as believers have the responsibility to stand for and uphold the truth. We have that responsibility. When I say truth, I'm talking about this book. The Bible said thy word is truth. This is truth. It's never going to change. It's never going to go away. It is the truth. It's always been the truth. And it will always be the truth. I don't care what happens in politics. I don't care what happens in the public realm. I don't have to care what becomes politically correct or incorrect. This book is truth. It will not change. You and I have the responsibility to stand for truth. Can I ask you this? If we don't take care of it, who in the world will? Amen. The atheist is not going to stand for the truth. The infidel is not going to stand for the truth. Hey, it's you and I. We have an obligation. And for the sake of the truth, we ought to cast off the works of darkness in our life. So, well, I just don't see how that pairs up, preacher. Take your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Look here one verse. What an amazing verse. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 in verse 2, it says, Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. All men. Look at the next verse. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Yes, sir. One of the most difficult things to do is to get people in our day to uh -huh. read. Yes, sir. To Amen. read. Amen. I have suggested somebody read this book, had people say, well, did they make a movie out of it? <laughs> <laughs> I've asked people, did you read this book? No, but I saw the movie. Yeah. Hardest thing in the world to do is to get people to read, and especially Amen. to get people to read the Bible. Yes, sir. Hey, that's God's people. Amen. It's hard to get God's people to read the Bible. Now, we've got a program we're trying to encourage you to read the Bible through in the year. We want you to do that. It's good to do. Stay faithful in reading the Word of God. But, man, it's hard to get people to read the Bible. But I'll tell you what. Hard to get the Christian to read the Bible. It's impossible to get the lost man to read the Bible, but they will read you. Amen. They'll read your life. They'll read that. They're going to watch it. Okay? They know. They know when you claim to be a Christian, but then to proceed to live like the devil. Come on. They'll read that. Hey, the truth of the matter is the lost world knows what a lot about what the Bible says. They may disagree with it. They may forget it. They may argue with it, but they know it. Because it's been out there enough. And they can put their finger on it when you're works of darkness and they see it. And they read your life. Boy, they've got you paid. You're living like the devil. You know, I said sometimes people like to hide things from the preacher. Can I say this to you? You're not hiding as much as you think you are. Come on, man. Yeah. Right, man. 
Now, I may not know it. I may not know it. But I'm going to ask you this. What about those with whom you engage in that work of darkness? They know it. They know it. I've always had this dread. Two things in life. When I was working with teenagers, I always dreaded if I would meet a teenager and, and uh, I would begin to talk to them. If they went to a school and we had kids, we had teens in our church and went to their school, I would always ask, do you know so-and-so? Now, usually they were safe. You were safe. They didn't. Big school, so they didn't know each other. But I always lived in fear that I would bring up somebody's name and they would go, they go to your church? That part? I go, man, I'll, okay, let's change the subject, you know. Now, it never happened, thank God. But I also had this fear. And this has helped me. You know, you get in heavy traffic. Oh, yes. Somebody cuts you off. And in a spirit of witnessing, you. Beep, beep! <laughs> I'm always afraid if I did that, that night. I'd knock on that door. Yeah. <laughs> and the person that opened the door would be the person that was in that car. Yes, <laughs> and I would go, hi, how you doing? I, I'm Brother Mosley. I'm Pastor First Baptist Church. You look familiar. No, 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 don't think I've ever seen you. I just got a familiar face. You know, I, I've always loved that. Right? Hey, wait a minute. You with me? You know, you can hide things from the preacher. You can hide things from your spouse. Hey, you can hide things from your parents. But those you sin with, they know it. They know, you know what they're doing? They're reading your life. And what you're doing is you're just wiping out the truth. You're acting like the truth doesn't matter. For that crowd, you've destroyed the truth. Destroyed the truth. I'm telling you, we're to cast off the works of darkness for the sake of the truth. Unfaithful Christians bring untold damage to lost people because they won't cast off the works of darkness. I want to say this to you. Now's the time to stand for truth. Now's the time to stand for truth. Why, preacher, why do we cast off the works of darkness? But for the sake of the truth. But not only that, my friend, number two, to sustain your testimony. To sustain your testimony. You say, well, I just don't think it's that important. Okay? Take your Bible to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. You see, a lot of people don't think too much about this. It doesn't occur to them when they're out there engaged in those unfruitful works of darkness. And their life, they're participating in things that really they don't want the preacher to know about. And, and, you know, we keep it hid as much as we can. But they don't think about their not sustaining their own testimony. Here's another fellow that didn't sustain his testimony. Genesis 19. Would you look at verse 14? All right. Genesis 19, verse 14. The Bible says, And Lot went out. And spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. You say, what's going on? Hey, listen, Lot had lived in Sodom now for a while. He had lived there a while. Now, God had come along and through the providence of God and through the faithfulness of Abraham. God had sent the word to Lot and he said, I'm going to destroy the city of Sodom, an excessively wicked place. God said, I'm going to destroy it. So Lot did exactly what any other dad would do. He went to warn his children. He went to say to them, listen, God is going to destroy this place for its wickedness, and we need to get up and get out of here. But when you talk about sad words, you see that where it says, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. You know why? Because his testimony 
had been ruined because he never made a clean break with the works of darkness that ruled the land of Sodom. He was willing to go in there and live amongst it. He was willing to take that position. It was profitable to him financially to be there. He was willing to sacrifice what was right. But it cost him his testimony. He failed to sustain his own testimony even before his own family. Amen. Or his own family. Now you hear me. You build your testimony over a lifetime. But you can ruin it in a moment of time. Oh, yes. Amen. You can ruin it in a moment of time. Thank you. I, the works of darkness. It doesn't take 15 to ruin your testimony. Just one. Amen. Just one. You say, well, I don't think it's that big a deal. Okay, wait a minute. What if the day comes when you really need somebody that you love and is close to you to listen to you as you witness to them? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? When you need them to pay attention, but they're not going to be impressed and they're not going to be convinced because your testimony is gone. Your testimony, you haven't sustained it. You sacrificed it maybe for lust, but you sacrificed it for that work of darkness. Can I say to you, now's the time to sustain your testimony by casting off the works of darkness. Because now's the time to be able to witness to people. If you can't look around and see the coming to pass of the truth of what's prophesied in the Word of God, then you are blind. Blind. There will come a time you're going to need to witness. Maybe that loved one that you, you love, maybe it's a friend, may not be family, maybe it's a good friend. But the word comes back that they've got inoperable cancer and they are going to die. And you know they're lost. So you come and you sit down with them and say, listen, I, I want to talk to you about your soul. But wait a minute. That's a person you've gone out and you've done those works in the dark. Oh, yeah. They're going to listen to you? Not on your life. You can be, you're going to seem to be as one that mocks and tells right. Hey, for the sake of the truth, to sustain your testimony, now is the time to cast off the works of darkness. Thirdly, for the securing of triumph. <clears throat> for the securing of triumph. Listen, my friend, we're in a battle. We're in a fight. We're in a great contest, however you want to say it. But it is a battle. It is a fight with absolutely eternal consequences. Uh, there's at least one NFL game today. They may have played one yesterday. I don't really know. I haven't watched it this season. I got a little aggravated when guys wouldn't stand for the national anthem. And the, now I know they missed the money, the vast amount of money I spent. Uh, but um, but I just got aggravated, so I don't know what they're doing. Uh, you know, the Super Bowl is coming up. But can I say this to you? It doesn't make a hill of beans difference who wins that game. Amen. Not for eternity. Doesn't matter. Now I can be just a rat as rabid a fan as you can. Man, I can I, I can see two doodlebugs in a fight and start rooting for one of them. You know, I mean I'm just that what? So I uh, you know and, and, and feel bad if my man loses. And and if I root for him, he usually does, alright? So But I'll tell you, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll tell you this, the fight we're in, the battle we're in, it's got eternal consequences. It does matter. I, and, and I don't know about you, but I've never been in a contest that I didn't want to win. I never played for the fun of the game. I played to win. Every time, all right? Every time. But this battle's important. Ephesians chapter 6, all right? Ephesians chapter 6, you said, what kind of battle? 
Here's the battle we're in, all right? Here's the battle we're in. I, just don't mistake it, all right? You think, well, it's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal. The Bible in Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the battle. That's the battle. Now, I got news for you. We were made to win. We were made to win. Take your Bible, Romans chapter 8. We were made to win. This is a battle. It's a big battle. It's an important battle. Romans chapter 8. I want you to look and see what verse 37 says. Verse 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Nay, not just conquerors, more than conquerors. God put us here not to lose this battle. We do battle against you know, principalities, against power, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the battle we're in, and it is a fight, and we're to be able to stand up and take that fight to them. But I'm going to tell you something. You'll never win that battle if you're engaged in the works of darkness yourself. If you're not willing to cast that sin off and put it behind you, you're not going to win. As a matter of fact, you're going to be the one that gets whooped. You're going to be the one that gets defeated. You never win fooling around with sin. I don't care what it is. You say, well, mm -mm, preacher, it's just a little sin. Yeah, every little one leads to a bigger one. Right. Yes, sir. Never fails. Never fails. You think I can control it. Every sinner's always said that. <clears throat> every sinner's always said that. But I just want to tell you, you'll never win, win if you're wrapped in the works of darkness. Yeah. You'll never win. But you and I, we're to cast off those works of darkness. Why? So we can sustain your testimony. And for the sake of the truth and for the securing of triumph, I want to win, man. I want to win. When I get to heaven, when I stand before God, I, I really want to hear him say, well done. Well done. I want to hear that. I, it, it doesn't matter. Look, I want the crown. But the crown's not as important as the well done. Well done. I, I've got some little trophies. I've got some little trophies at my house. One I got when I was in the fourth grade. It's the cheapest piece of plastic you've ever seen in your life. But I held on to it ever since I was in the fourth grade. That's been 150 years ago, all right? And I, I've held on to that little piece of plastic because I won it. I've got another one that's about this high. It's a bowling trophy. A bowling trophy. Any of you ever bowled with me? Any of you here ever bowled with me? My brother has. You have? Okay, my wife had. You did? All right. Great bowler, right? Amen. Champion bowler. I've got a trophy. It says most improved bowler. <laughs> said, how did you win that? God is good. <laughs> I was out at Tarrant County Junior College at the time and, and taking a PE class, and I always went for the rigorous activities. Amen. So I took bowling in PE. And uh, we bowled. And the first day they kept scores, the worst game of my life. But through the year, you know, because we bowl every week, I improved and it got better. And it started with the worst game I've ever bowled. And so it goes up here to this one. And I bowled the best game I've ever bowled in my life when I was in that class. And I won the trophy. Amen. And I've held on to it as proof. <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't even mean I'm a good bowler. It means God was good to me, all right? The circumstances fell in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, I'm going to stand before him yeah. and hear him say, Well done, yeah. thou good and faithful servant. And can I say this to you that are here? I want you to hear that. Yeah. I want you to hear that. I don't, I'm not going to stand off to the side if you have to stand and confess to sin and failure all through that uh, that judgment. I'm not going to stand off to the side. I tried to tell you. I warned you. 
I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to stand over there weeping. Yes, sir. Weeping. You see, you and I, it's time to cast off the works of darkness. We, we're not the time to mess around with sins anymore. We don't have time. He's coming. He's coming. You need to stand for the truth, but you can't do it if you're living and, and you've got those works of darkness in your lives. You can't do it. Hey, you need to sustain your testimony, but you'll never do it if they're seen. You'll never sustain it. You will be caught. You will be caught. He said, I've got away with it so far. You remember that so far. The truth will come out. Hey, you'll not sustain your testimony. Not only that, you'll never be able to secure the triumph. Unless you decide, you know what, preacher? I'm going to cast off those works of darkness. You know what will happen if you don't? Truth will fall in the streets. Your testimony will be left in tatters. Triumph will only be a dream swallowed up in defeat. What do you need to do? I'll tell you what you need to do. Only one thing. You need to cast off those works of darkness. You need to step out this morning. We stand to send the invitation. You need to walk this aisle. You need to bow here at these front uh, steps. If you can't bow there in the knee, then you have a seat in one of these front pews and you confess your sin to God. Now you don't need to come tell me. But you need to come confess it to Him. But when you get up, you need to forsake it. Amen. It needs to be left right here. Amen. That's what it is. You say, preacher, my testimony is already in tatters. Then rebuild it. Amen. Then rebuild it. Right. You messed up? Okay. <coughs> rebuild it. Right. Rebuild it. You say, preacher, I've been defeated on every hand, but they're still trying to win the battle. You can't try. That's up to you. What are you going to do with that? Would you stand, please, this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed? Now is the time to cast off the works of darkness. Oh, my friend, we you do it today? We you do it today? Will you come to him and confess that sin? Say, I'm, I'm on, Lord, I'm, I'm through. I'm going to forsake it. Would you do that? The altar's open. Would you come? Heavenly Father, I pray now you deal with us. Lord, help your people to be honest. Help them to be honest. Help them to realize you know about it. It doesn't matter who else knows, you know. Lord, don't let pride hold them back and keep them from walking the aisle and taking care of business today. Lord, help them to come. Help them to confess and forsake it here. And Lord, help them to get back on track with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We sing this morning.